22 and 1 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Come on, let's give him thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the the Victory Tabernacle Church of Raleigh uh, morning virtual worship. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity to uh, come into your uh, homes this morning or wherever your abode may be. And we are declaring to you today that this is a day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, we're giving praise to God for God has been good to us. And I want you to know today that he has been good to me and I believe that he's been good to you. If you are alive and well today, then God, amen, has been good to you. Things may not be as well as you would like them to be or uh, the way you want them to be, but yet God is still great. Plus, it's an opportunity for God to uh, show himself great, show himself mighty unto those that put their trust in him. I want you to know today that we're thankful that we have this opportunity to come uh, into uh, your place of worship and to worship with you today and to walk in God's word. As we continue to pray for you, we bid uh, you that um, asked you and that you would pray for us, amen, that we will stay on the wall, we will stand in the gap, 
and we still we will continue to uh, preach to preach that God bid us to preach. I want you to know that I'm thankful for your responses to this broadcast, and we realize that without you, the audience, um, I would just be up here talking. So we're grateful. Thank you, Victory, uh, for your support of the ministry, and, it's, and especially I'm excited about the testimonies of how God is deepening uh, your uh, uh, life with him, deepening your union with him, uh, deepening uh, uh, your growth. Uh, you're putting down um, deeper roots in the midst of this uh, vicious storm, of uh, this pandemic. Uh, and I, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful uh, for I had a testimony the other day that really blessed me and said, you know, Pastor, I never thought uh, there would be a time that I could experience the presence of God and enjoy the presence of God and worship God in my home just like I was at church. That's where God is trying to get us. That's where God is trying to get us. That's what Jesus tried to tell the woman at the well. If you you got to learn that if you're going to worship me, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. Whether there are two or three gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. Yes, and even if you're by yourself, you still have the triune God present there with you, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and you can have a Holy Ghost good time, you know, wherever you may be. So I, I'm grateful that that God is, is doing just that, that we have been a church that has been founded on the Word of God. We live by the Word of God. We, we, we preach the Word of God, and it's the Word of God that is keeping us now through all of this. We don't have to worry about falling away. We don't have to worry about uh, people becoming complacent and forgetting God and putting things before God because they have a relationship with God based on God's word. So help us, pray for us uh, that we will continue to stick to the word, not get sidetracked by all other things that are going on. I, I guess you know that by now. Uh, I, I got one focus and one focus only, and that is ministering the word of God. Let everybody else do whatever they do, but I do what I do, and I'm thankful that God has called me to it. So again, uh, we thank you throughout the land that uh, you are receiving the word, and you are helping us evangelize, you are telling others about this word. So we're so grateful for that. Continue to pray uh, for us, and we're going to pray for you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for, again, this opportunity that we have to stand, God, in your stead, God, and to proclaim your gospel, your gospel, who, uh, your gospel that is able, God, to change our lives, your gospel that is the very power of you unto salvation. We thank you for this opportunity that we um, are humbled in just being a vessel, humbled in just being an instrument of your choice for this hour, for this time, to speak to these, your great people, Father. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the lives you're touching, the lives you're changing. People, Lord, are seeing the need, Lord, to commit their life to Jesus Christ. People that are saved or, or tightening up, Lord, their belts, and they are, are becoming more aware of the fact that, Lord, uh, they need to draw closer to you. They need to trust you more and put their faith in you more. We're just thankful for that today. Bless us now as we go into your word, Father, and we give you glory, honor, and praise for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, we're in this ongoing series, and we're part three of uh Title, a series we are have entitled "A Well Built Christian," and um, we uh, our basic texts are in Matthew seven twenty four through twenty seven and Jude seventeen through twenty seven. So let's read those today. Therefore, whosoever said, who's, who's, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I would like unto him a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rains descended 
and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened to a foolish man who has built his house upon the sand and the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house that it fell and great was the falling of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. I know I kind of added that to it, but I, I thought that this should plug that in there while we were going. But then Jude 17. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last days who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These being, these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But ye, beloved, build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life, and of some having compassion, making a difference, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. So we want to uh, talk to you today um, again from that uh, 20th verse. Uh, and this today we want to focus on praying in the Holy Ghost. But ye, beloved, build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And I want to entitle this one today, Just Pray. Just Pray. Last week, Jude admonished us to build up, to build upon, and to keep building on Christ, our foundation. He let them know and he let us know if we were going to stand and withstand the violent and blatant attack that has come upon our faith, that we must continue to rigorously build our lives on God's word. He let us know that we must be in an ongoing building program, amen, that will help us to stand in the time of storm. Two things we need to clarify clarify right out of the gate this morning is number one, uh, to build upon Christ is to build upon the, his word. I need to say that again. To build upon Christ is to build upon the, his word. Number two, Jude is not referring to the act of our faith, but the object of our faith, which is God. Jude it says in verse three, we are to earnestly, seriously, earnestly, seriously contend. That word contend to, to struggle, to put forth all efforts to overcome all the difficulties and dangers that threaten our faith. Let me say that again. He says that we are to earnestly, seriously contend. And that word simply means to, to struggle, to put forth an effort to overcome all difficulties and dangers that threaten our faith. You remember in Revelations when uh, John was banished to the Isle of Patmos and uh, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day and the Lord gave him uh, the message uh, to uh, the seven churches. There was one common thread that held those 
uh, seven uh, messages to the church together. There was one common thread that cemented the whole focus that Christ was given to the seven churches if they were going to make it, and that was the word he committed to all seven of them, to he that overcome it, to them that overcome it. So, so he, he, he lets us know that, that, that if we are going to uh, 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 make it, we're going to have, to have the mindset that we have to be overcomers. And, and being overcomers, we have to contend. We have to struggle, put forth all efforts to overcome all the difficulties that threaten our faith. Amen. And, and, and one of the things that is so important about that is that when we think about when Paul spoke to the, um, the, 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 uh, the church, uh, the Hebrew church, he, he let them know that uh, it was by faith in Hebrews 11, amen, that, that, that those that uh, came out victorious, those that overcame, those that loved God and was dedicated to God and committed to God, uh, won the victory. It was by faith. Yes, they, 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 they received the promise, amen, because they held to their faith. When I think about th this word faith here, I think about Luke 22, when Jesus um, uh, gave Peter the heads up about the fact that Satan wanted to shred him. Satan wanted to tear him apart. And, and I want you to know that God hasn't changed. You know, that's why we have to be in tune with him. That's why we have to be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's why we must be vigilant about staying in his word, because that's how God is speaking to us. And he said that he wouldn't have us ignorant of the devices of Satan, of the schemes of Satan, of the traps of Satan, of the temptations of Satan. But yet he would make us aware of them. He makes Peter aware of the fact that Satan wants to shred him. But I, I, I noticed something here that is very important. Jesus did not pray for Peter to get some kind of courage, to man up. Jesus didn't pray uh, that uh, Peter wouldn't all of a sudden start walking in fear and become afraid. Jesus didn't pray that uh, Peter... Uh, I'm going to give you some holy boldness. So whatever the devil tries, you're going to be able to stand up against him. Jesus didn't even rebuke the devil for his diabolic scheme that he had conjured up against Peter to shred him to pieces. But notice what Jesus did do. He prayed for Peter that his faith fail not my God. My prayer today for you is that your faith fail not. In other words, uh, uh, his faith in the one who was faithful. If he did not uh, let go of that, if he held on to that, that if he stood on that, that no matter what Satan tried, he would not be able to destroy him. Yes, he's saying that to us today. When we keep our faith, God, the object of our faith, when we keep our faith in him who is faithful, and I want you to know he's faithful today, and he's faithful to keep those things which you have committed uh, unto him against that day. He's faithful to bring you out. He's faithful to deliver you. He's faithful to strengthen you. He's faithful to see you through. And the list could go on. I could preach today about he's faithful. Amen. But, but, but that's what Jesus prayed for him, that his faith would fail not. 
And, and, and now today, uh, he gives us some more building material, amen, through his word to strengthen our faith in him. If we're going to stand and withstand, we must get serious about our prayer life. I want you to know today, if, if you are a believer today, if you are a Christian, if you are walking with, with Christ today, all that's going on around us is signifying to us, is warning us, is alerting us that if you're going to make it, you're going to have to make it through prayer. If you're going to make it, you're going to have to make it by prayer. If you're going to make it, you're going to have to make it with the help of prayer. Having said that, it's time to get serious about our prayer life. That's why Jesus said men ought to always pray and not faint. Yes, not, not, not give up, not quit. Don't stop. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what the enemy is doing. Keep on praying. Yes, that's what the saints used to say. Keep on praying for the Lord is nigh. Keep on praying for he will hear your cry. The Lord has promised. Hallelujah. And his word is true. Keep on praying. He will answer you. I want you to know today that God does answer prayer in the morning. God does answer prayer at noon. God does answer prayer in the evening. He even answers prayer at midnight. All you got to do is just keep your heart in tune. So he, he, he tells them that, that they got to get serious about their prayer life. He tells us that we must learn the art of praying in the Holy Ghost. Simply praying with the Holy Ghost. Simply put, praying by the Holy Ghost. Simply put, praying through the help of the Holy Ghost. In other words, he's trying to tell us when the Holy Spirit urges us to pray, pray. When the Holy Spirit, amen, is, 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 is pulling us into a time of intercession, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Follow his lead. It's for a reason. I tell people all the time, at least I tell my church all the time, when God sends us a word, amen, God is not sending us a word for what happened yesterday or even today. He's sending us a word for what we're getting ready to go in, for what we're getting ready to experience, for what we're getting ready to go through. And God wants us to know today that if you're going to make it, you got to get serious about your prayer life. Jude makes it clear that we are going to be, if we're going to be a wise builder, we must keep building. Have you ever seen a house or a building or a structure where they laid the foundation and they started to erect the building, started to frame the house, and, 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 and all of a sudden, everything just stopped. There was nothing else done for whatever reason it did but but and 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 every day you pass by amen uh, uh by you begin to see that nothing was being done that there was no progress that there was no more work performed on it everything was just laying around everything was just sitting there in its same place amen and nothing was being done Nothing else was being done. So then we see that, that as we begin to pass, the building started to deteriorate or the ground started to grow up or the, the, the building material started to weather because nothing was being done. They, they laid the foundation. They started erecting the structure. They framed it up, but nothing else was done for whatever reason that might be. Like many Christians today, we get saved, we uh, are put on the right foundation, we start to build, and we just stop. Think about that. Some people go no further than just getting saved, joining the church, getting baptized, getting their name on the road, but it's more to it than that. Colossians 2 and 7 says that we are to be rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. Simply put, amen, we are to finish the work 
that God has started in us. Philippians 2 and 12 reminds us that we are to keep working at and to keep working on what is called our salvation. When we think about the, the, the controversy that, that was uh, had with, with James when he was talking about faith by works, you know, uh, being dead, and, 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 and we go through all of that. But Colossians, I mean Galatians, Romans, and Colossians all concur with the fact, amen, that we are saved uh, by grace uh, through faith. That, that is clear. But, but works are not the cause of our salvation, but the evidence of it. That's what James was trying to get us to see, that, 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 that we're not uh, saved by works. Work is not the cause of it, but it's the evidence of it. Jesus makes it clear in Matthew 7 when he tells us that you will know them by their fruit, or by their fruit you will know them. How we live reveals what we believe. I need to say that again. How we live reveals what we believe. And we cannot separate the two. When we think about the fact that many people will willfully, you know, live in sin and willfully walk in sin and yet uh, profess to be a Christian, but they must realize that this is what uh, uh, James was talking about, that this, this is dead faith. This is dead works. This is a person who, as I told you on last week, who is not saved. This is a person, amen, who is just professing to be, amen, but yet have not seriously committed their lives into Christ. Amen. Faith in God makes us alive unto God. I need to say that again. Faith in God makes us alive unto God. We must nourish, cultivate, and strengthen our life by prayer. I need to say that again. If you're going to survive this onslaught of the enemy, if you're going to survive this uh, blatant attack of the enemy, you must understand like Peter, Satan wants to shred us. Satan wants to sift us. Satan wants to tear us apart. But we must understand that through prayer, we must nourish, cultivate, and strengthen our life in Christ. Spiritual buildings or, uh, uh, or, or natural building, there has to be some continuous work on them. Spiritual building or spiritual growth does three things for us. Now, we must understand today that we're talking about building ourselves up on our most holy faith, amen, praying in the Holy Ghost, amen. We're talking about spiritual building ourselves up. We're talking about spiritual growth. And when we talk about spiritual building and we talk about spiritual growth, it does three things for us. Constantly, we're working on our building. Constantly, we're making sure that we are growing. And when we do that, three things happen. First of all, it secures us against spiritual decay and dilapidation. Remember I said you're going to buy that house, you're going by that building, and all of a sudden the building stops. And the next thing you know, you know, the grass grow up and, and, and the, the, the material land out there has weathered and deteriorated. It's the same thing with a Christian. Amen. When we stop, amen, uh, working on our spiritual building, when we stop growing, we find ourselves becoming spiritually dilapidated. We, we find ourselves spiritually decaying. Too many of us, amen, are living in unfit buildings. I need to say that again. Too many of us are living in Unfit, unfit building because we're not keeping our building spiritually, you know, up to code. Yes, a prayerless building, amen, is a building, amen, who God does not dwell in. I need to say that again. We're talking about building ourselves up on our most holy faith. A prayerless building, amen, is a building, amen, that God does not live in. You need to think about that. 
when we think about, amen, did God dwelling us? God does not dwell in a prayerless building. It is unfit for him to live in. I mean, 1 Corinthians 3 and 9 says, we are God's building. Ephesians 2, 22 says, we are a holy temple. We are the habitation of God. And I want you to know, wherever there's no prayer, you don't have to worry about finding God. Wherever there's no prayer, there is no union with God. Wherever there is no prayer, amen, you m must understand there is no connection to God. We must understand prayer is the thing that connects us to God. Prayer is the thing that God uses to help grow us, to help mature us, to help strengthen us, to help meet the needs of this earthly body. Prayer, amen, is the key. The second thing, amen, a spiritual building or spiritual growth does is it protects us against yielding to temptation. God's words protects us from putting the wrong thing in our buildings. I need to say that again. God's word protects us from putting the wrong thing in our building. Romans, amen, lets us know, ye do yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin to God. I mean, that, that brings me uh, uh, to this frame of mind that when we think about, amen, our churches today, when we think about the message that our churches are sending today, when we think about the, 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 the framework that is being laid by so many today, amen, in Christendom, when it comes down to uh, the church, the body of Christ. We, we can't tell, amen, people are just as comfortable, amen, in our earthly buildings, amen, as they are in a club, a nightclub. And that ought not be something about God's building ought to be different. Something about God's building ought to look different. Something about God's building ought to display, amen, a different a uh, 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 attitude, a, a different feeling, have a different surrounding. I'm telling you today, amen, it's time to pray. Just pray. Number three, it helps us to walk in obedience to God's word. That's what spiritual building does. That's what spiritual growth does. It helps us to walk in obedience to God's word. Jesus said in John 6, 63, my words are spirit and life. Paul says in Galatians 5 and 16, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. To walk in God's word is to walk in God's Holy Spirit. To walk in God's Holy Spirit is to walk in God's word. Romans 8 and 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made us free from the law of sin and death. Any prayer that nourishes, cultivates, and strengthens the Christian life is a prayer in the Holy Ghost. A prayer, amen, without the Holy Ghost, amen, is just a bunch of words. I need to say that again. A prayer without the Holy Ghost, amen, is just a bunch of words. So what uh, does praying in the Holy Ghost look like? Is it praying dignified? Is it praying loud? Is it praying softly? Is it praying in tongue? Is it praying using a lot of spiritual rhetoric? Uh, I, I don't know the answer for you. But what I do know is that uh, we can't put prayer in a box. Throughout the Bible, prayer took on different temperaments with different people and different situations and different times. But what I do know is a sustaining prayer is a prayer in the Holy Ghost. What I do know is a strengthening prayer is a prayer 
in the Holy Ghost. What I do know is a prayer that prayer gets its power, amen, from the Holy Ghost. I need to say that again. What I do know is that prayer gets its power from the Holy Ghost. And if you want power to pray, ask the Lord to give you a praying spirit. Come on with me today. I'm saying it and I'm asking you to ask God the same thing. Lord, give me a praying spirit. I remember years ago, amen, we used to sing a song, Lord, when I pray, give me what to say. Help me to say yes, 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 Lord. Oh, I tell you right now, I'm feeling pretty good right about now because I know the importance of having a praying spirit, a praying spirit, amen, that will keep you from straying, a praying spirit that will keep you connected to God's word, a praying spirit that will keep you living a holy life, a praying word that will help you, amen, to stay obedient to God's commandments. I want you to know that we, 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 we talk about you know, prayer as though, amen, that it's, it's something that we can't do. It's something that we can't wrap our minds around with something that we can't get a handle on. And, and how do I pray? And what do I say? And why come I can't pray like this one? And why come I can't pray like that one? And it seemed like they can just pray and the heavens come down. Forget all of that nonsense. Just pray. Yet yeah, talk to God. Tell him about your troubles. He will hear your faintest cry and he will answer by and by. Just pray. That's what God is telling us. Amen. Start praying. And I tell you right now, when you start praying, you'll find, amen, that the Holy Spirit, amen, will come, amen, into your spirit and ignite you. The Holy Spirit will come into your spirit and begin to motivate you and encourage you and move you, amen, to pray. I can tell you about my walk with God, how in that I could sense sometimes when I was praying that the Holy Spirit was motivating me, that the Holy Spirit was moving me, that the Holy Spirit was igniting something in my spirit. But in my mind, I had something to do. In my mind, I had somewhere to go. I, in my mind, I, uh, uh, I had another agenda. And I was trying to snuff him out. I was trying to, to, to shush him. I was trying to, you know, just, just push him away. But I tell you right now, it's something about the Holy Ghost. When he wants you to pray and he gets into your spirit, he gets into your heart, he gets into your mind, he gets into your soul, you won't do nothing, amen, but throw up your hands and begin to call on the name of Jesus. Maybe get on your knees and begin to call on the name of Jesus. Riding in your car, begin to call on the name of Jesus. On your job, you can't pray out. I'm not encouraging you to go to uh, your, uh, the bathroom, find a secret closet, but in your spirit, amen, you can begin to intercede in, and that's what you need on your job. When you see stuff, don't talk about it. Pray about it. Yes, a bad supervisor. Yes, amen, a, a co-worker that's not doing their job. All in your spirit begin to intercede on their behalf. Romans 8 and 26 says, Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our spirit, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be I tell you right now, you, 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 sometimes you don't know what to say. You don't have an utterance. And, and, and I want you to know praying in the Holy Ghost sometimes, it's just being silent. <laughs> I tell you right now, I'm getting happy here. Praying in the Holy Ghost, amen, sometimes, see, and that's when you know, you really know sometimes you're praying in the Holy Ghost when you can't articulate what you want to say, when you can't put what you want to say in words, when, when, when you can't develop this nice, pretty prayer, this thought out prayer, this intelligent prayer, amen, that's when the Holy Ghost, amen, really takes over. You must learn that God is calling us to just Pray. And sometimes prayer is just one word, Jesus. Prayer is two words, help, Lord. I want you to know we can't box God in when it comes to praying. Just 
pray. Yes, he says that, that, that likewise the Spirit helps us. What I do know is that prayer lives by the Holy Ghost. And without the Holy Ghost, our prayer life dies. I tell you again, prayer lives by the Holy Ghost. And without prayer, amen, it dies. What I do know is that there's a difference, amen, in praying in the Holy Ghost and then praying in ourselves. There's a difference in praying in the Holy Ghost, amen, and praying, amen, in our flesh. And when we think about prayer, I admonish you today as I close, just pray. Amen. If you're sitting in a room with somebody, tell them, just pray. Don't worry about how you pray. Don't worry about who's praying. Don't worry about in what way you pray. Don't worry about where you pray. Just pray. When I think about prayer, I think about James 5 and 13. How he said that Elijah was a man subject to like passions like we are. But he earnestly prayed that it would rain not, and it did not rain for three years and six months, for three and a half years. And he prayed again, and the heavens opened up, and the rain. The bottom line is, he said that he's a man, amen, with like passions as we are. In other words, Elijah was a man that had some issues. <laughs> I tell you right now, and God is trying to get you to understand that you might have some issues, right? but just pray. The Holy Ghost can override all the issues in your life when you just pray. But if you don't pray, amen, he's not going to do anything. The Holy Ghost, amen, will override all of the difficulties, all of the struggles, all of the pushback in your life. But you got to learn, amen, these things cannot stop God from moving on your behalf. The devil in your way, the enemy fighting you, problems in your marriage, problems with your children, problems on your job, problems, amen, that are going on in the world today, problems with this pandemic. I want you to know, yes, like Elijah, yes, amen, we have these issues, but God is admonishing us just Pray. Yes, just pray. That's why the old saints used to say, down on my knees when trouble rise. I go to Jesus beyond the sky. He promised me he will hear my cry if I was just telling, you know, down on my knees. I want you to know today that God is admonishing us. Just pray. Pray when we don't feel like it. Pray when we want to. Pray when we don't want to. Pray, amen, when we want to pray. Pray when the devil don't want us to pray. Pray when people will pray for us. Pray when we have to pray by ourselves. Pray, amen, when it seems like we have a need. And pray when we don't have a need. Pray, amen, for ourselves and pray for others. I'm admonishing you today that, that you said just pray. And when you pray, Pray in the Holy Ghost. When you pray, release yourself up to the Holy Ghost. When you pray, give yourself over to the Holy Ghost. When you pray, ask the Holy Ghost to have his way in your life. When you pray, give the Holy Ghost, amen, the leeway to do whatever he wants to do in your life. That's why Paul told Timothy, he said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath, and without doubting, I tell you right now, just pray. Just pray. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubt. If you're going to pray in the Holy Ghost, you got to pray, amen, with holy hands. If you're going to pray in the Holy Ghost, you got to pray and believe God. Yet you got to believe, amen, that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Yes, when you pray, amen, you got to pray in the Holy Ghost. You got to trust that God is able to do whatever he said he would do. Pray in the Holy Ghost, lifting up holy hands without wrath, Amen. Oh, yes. He said, if you don't forgive men of their sins, he will not forgive you of your sins. Come on. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Say, it means saying, Father, forgive me for my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. I think about Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. Yes, because he had founded it upon the seas and established it 
upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? He that hath clean hand, lifting up holy hand without wrath, and a pure heart, who hath not lifting up his soul to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He, this man is going to receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation, in spite of the fact that folk have stopped praying, in spite of the fact that churches have become proudest, in spite of the fact that folk, amen, don't want to pray for themselves, they want others to pray for them, in spite of the fact that the devil is trying to snuff out prayer in our life, in spite of the fact that it seems like he's trying to create so much chaos that we will be so much focused on the chaos that we don't want to pray. In spite of that, God still got some folk that are standing in the gap. Hallelujah. God still got some folk that get up in the morning and pray. In the noonday, they pray. In the evening, they pray. In the night, they pray. Pray in their showers. Pray while they're driving along the roadside. Everywhere they go, they understand when the Holy Spirit moves upon them, that this is the generation that seek that faith. Faith. This is the generation that seek thy face, O Jacob. And he's saying to us, it's time to pray. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up the everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, the Lord strong, strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads and be ye lifted up the everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. And I pray today, amen, that you will just pray. Amen. When you don't know nothing else to say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, in the midst of this pandemic, there's no other help we know. I know you're waiting on a vaccine, but there's no other help we know. I know you're waiting on uh, uh, Biden to get in office, but there's no other help. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the God that created the heavens and the earth. Our help is in the man that said, let there be light, and there was light. Our help is in the man, amen, that put the stars in the sky, that put the sun to rule by day, and the moon to rule by night. Our help is in the man that parted the waters and said, land, stay to the right, and water, you live on the left. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And if you pray, God will answer your prayer. If you pray, God will come through. If you pray, God will strengthen you. If you pray, God will hold you. Oh, every now and then you got to say, hear my cry, oh Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth shall I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed by this pandemic, when my heart is overwhelmed by all of this political evil and madness and evil. When my heart is overwhelmed by the madness of man, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock. Hallelujah. 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 Lead me to that rock that's higher than I. For you've been a shelter. Mm, mm, mm. And a strong tower, hallelujah, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the turbulence, in the midst of the wind blowing, in the midst of the rain descending, in the midst of the flood coming, I will be, amen, standing on a rock, unmovable. Just pray, hallelujah. Just pray. Just pray. And when you pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. When you pray, let the Holy Ghost have its way. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and moves you to pray, don't shun him. Don't grieve him. Just pray. Father, we thank you today. For your word, admonishing us to just pray. Not worried about the semantics. Not worried about the tone. Not worried about the depth. But just simply, Lord, I need you. 
Every hour, I need you. Help us. Help us. Help us to pray. Help us to understand that there's a sweet hour of prayer that draws us from a world of cares that bids us to our fathers to roam. Make all our wants and wishes known. Let us know in the seasons of distress and grief. Our soul through the Holy Ghost will find relief. And as we pray in the Holy Ghost, when we're oftentimes tempted by the toys and snares, we will escape them when you're present. Sweet hour of prayer. Lord, there may be somebody here today, somebody listening today. that needs to pray a prayer of repentance and they feel like they don't know how to pray, what to say. They want to be saved. Help them to understand today through the Holy Spirit that if they come to you, you will in no wise cast them out. If they simply call on your name, that you will save them. If you are that person today, pray with me. Lord, I realize that I'm a sinner, but I thank you today that the preacher told me you died for my sins and that through you I can have new life. And by faith, I ask you to come into my heart, come into my life, make me a new creation. And I believe today that you have done that, and I'm not the same. Thank you for saving me. If you prayed that prayer today, just remember, God has come into your heart, come into your life, that God has changed you, not by your feeling, not by things changing, but simply by faith. God has changed your life today. Get in the word of God. Start praying. Start praying in the Holy Ghost. Don't be scared. Allow the Spirit of God to pray in you and through you and with you. And you'll find out that your life will become so much brighter and so much greater. God bless you today. Trust that you all will have a great day. Just pray. And when you pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. God bless you. We'll look to see you on Wednesday night. Amen. As we study God's word, have a great day today.